Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some of the board games you might just want to have in your own collection someday. So Tyrants of the Underdark is a board game that's been out for a while now but been difficult to acquire or maybe been out of print and so this new version has just landed on our shelves. So I guess I should tell you five things you need to know about this D&D themed game. <laughs> Tyrants of the Underdark is set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, where you're part of a drow elf household trying to gain power. This is a deck building game where you'll grow your influence by allying with different factions and drafting them into your deck. The goal is to earn prestige and enhance your house, while of course spreading your influence in a variety of locations. Can you build the best deck to lead you to victory? Thing one, what's this game all about? So in Tyrants of the Underdark, you are the head of a noble drow elf household and you're on the quest for power um, and influence by controlling different areas of the map provided, but by also acquiring people from different factions into your deck in the card drafting portion. Um, so this is a kind of a D&D game and those of you familiar with Forbidden Realms will recognize a lot of what is here from characters to beasts to locations. It should be relatively familiar. Um, the good news, however, is that you don't need to be familiar with D&D to kind of enjoy this theme um, simply because it's kind of high fantasy. So you'd be familiar with a lot of it anyway. Now, the problem I suppose with the theme that I have is it's not really much of a theme, is that it? it's more of a setting. Um, it feels like these cards really could have been about anything, but they are just named in the, the style of, or in the vein of um, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I wish they had connected a little bit more or there was a way for them to interact some more that it didn't feel like it could have just been about anything. Now, similar games to this. Well, definitely it gives you kind of Dominion style vibes with all of the deck, you know, stuff um but also reminds me a little bit of sorcerer from white wizard games um and this is a game where yes you don't construct your deck but you do battle over various zones using your cards and, and you definitely feel that here thing two what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn so firstly this is a deck builder meaning it's a game in which you start with the deck of cards you will buy further things to put in your deck of cards to buy further things to put in your deck of cards. Um, the fun addition here, however, is that there is a game board you're trying to control and you're using your deck of cards to do this as well. So you've got area control and deck management, which is an interesting combination. So what will happen on your turn is that you'll play a handful of cards and these will allow you to buy cards, um, allow you to place troops out on the board, um, to fight troops out on the board, activate abilities, that kind of fun stuff. Um, so when it comes to your deck itself, um, when you purchase a card, it will have a victory points cost on it. But there is also this idea that you can promote cards to your inner circle, which allows you to remove them from your deck. And then they have a higher kind of victory points value at the end of the game um, after you've taken them out. So it's a kind of a way of thinning your deck, which is a nice touch. Um, I do very much like that your deck also affects the game board. Um, and out on the game board, you're going to want to control different areas and zones through using your little tiny soldier tokens. Um, and you'll want majorities there. Now, some of the towns um, give you bonuses um, if you control them during the game. And they're the kind of thing you're going to want to get and you're going to want to fight over. And you're going to want to make sure nobody runs unchecked on the board. Um, because at the end of the game, when somebody runs out of all of their tokens and you total up the scores, you count what, how many areas you've owned on the map um, and such along with the victory points in your deck. So both parts are equally important if you really want to try and win. Um, 
So overall, I really like the deck building portion in this. Um, mechanically, it's really, really fun. There's a number of decks that you can mix and match with, and I love how the combinations go together to make the game feel kind of different every time you play. Um, the area control part is not my favorite, but it is interesting, I will say. Um, overall, I had fun playing this. It's well put together and it's easy to play. Thing three on the table. So yeah, Tyrants is kind of a big game. It's got a really big board. Everybody has player boards and they need room for cards around it as well. And then there's also a board with all of the cards themselves laid out. Um, so yeah, this isn't a tidy game. And while it's, it's cool to look at, I do wish the main game board was a little more interesting. It's very bland for something that dominates the table so much. Um, but setup for this is pretty straightforward. You're just going to pick which set of decks or cards you want to play with this time around and put them together. The real problem is the terror down with this because then you have to separate all the cards out into their individual decks afterwards and you have to kind of gather up all your super teeny tiny tokens back off the board. So that's a bit of a letdown there. Um, it takes about an hour for two of us to play and do note that if you play this at two players you don't play with the full game board you play with like a piece in the center and you know what I didn't mind at all I didn't notice I don't feel like I lost out by playing this in the two player version there was plenty of space and room to maneuver around. Now replayability wise um, I think there's a good bit here simply because of the variety of the decks. Um, you could come up with like 15 different combinations of ways of combining them and each one is its own unique style of play. So there's plenty to explore. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? So this is the newer version of Tyrants I'm talking about and it definitely feels like a more budget one. The component quality is not fantastic. I don't like the cards, they're incredibly thin. And I hate all of these tiny throwaway tokens that are incredibly necessary to gameplay. I also dislike the fact that there isn't any art on the game board. It's just kind of bland. Um, and while all that is a problem, there are some nice elements here. I think the art in the game is rather lovely. I like the setting and the theme. And you know what? Some amount of effort has been put into this where there are some great quotes and things on the cards as well. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a good bit going on here. Um, but the problem for me, I suppose, is that, you know, this is a budget game. How much can we really expect from it? Um, but for me, I feel like sometimes you know, the lower component quality detracts from enjoying the gameplay a little bit. And I think that might be the case here. Thing five, is it actually any good? So Tyrants of the Underdark has been on my watch list for some time because I, A, I really, really like deck builders, but B, I really enjoy deck builders with a twist because there's a lot of deck builders out there. I want one that's doing something slightly different and this really fit into that bracket, but it's been out of print and whatnot. So when I saw that it was getting reprinted, I think I actually pre-ordered this. I was so excited about it and I was very surprised at the price being less than I had assumed it was going to be. So here was me thinking, good things were happening um, but of course when the game arrives it's in a smaller box than the older version and while it's got all of the expansions from the original inside the box the component quality is obviously where they've saved money here um, but be all that as it may the game is really fun to play like I, uh, my favorite part is the deck building portion. I am I can build deck stuff, yes, but I'm terrible at map stuff. I don't actually like area control games all that much. Um, so this is a really unusual mix for me, but the, the whole mixing of the different factions to create basically a different game every time you play with the cards is really cool and really fun. Um, I love some of the combinations, the triggers that go together with the cards. Yeah, like all of that was completely up my street. Um, I particularly enjoy the fact that you control the board based on what you're doing with your deck. So you might build a deck that will do all sorts of things with the board, or you might build a deck that'll do all sorts of things with abilities and victory points and such, right? So it felt like you had plenty of options. But the board is a necessity, I believe. Um, I don't think you can ignore it, because especially at two players, if I left it unchecked, my opponent would just claim all of these zones and the zones are worth victory points at the end of the game but not only that there are three central cities that are worth points during the game if you can control them so there's a version where you can control the zone and then control it entirely um, and if you control it entirely you can start accruing victory points 
Um, my problem with these cities is that, well, yeah, you fight over them because they have a cool bonus that will help you during the game. Why wouldn't you want that? Um, but they're not all equal. Um, one of them is better than the other two. And I always found that every game we played, we ended up fighting over the same best city. Because if you're going to fight over something, it may as well be the best one. So I found it funneled the games to feel very same on the board portion, which was we're fighting over this good city and then just placing tokens out in other places. Um, my other problem with this map is how the game ends. Um, and what happens here is the person who places their last token out on the board, the game ends, everything stops right then and there. And this is problematic in an area control game because that person's last turn could have been, I remove your token from here, 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 and here, and I lose half my points on one side of the board, and I get no comeback to that or nothing I can do about it. It makes ending the game an incredibly powerful move. Um, and it's one of those moves that I, I, it's the reason I don't like area control games because it feels so swingy like that, that something that you work towards for turns could suddenly be taken away without a chance to do really anything about it. So that's one of my big problems with this is the game would be fun to play and then it would leave a very sour taste in your mouth at the end. Um, now, overall, I have to say that I, I enjoyed my time with Tyrants of the Underdark. I, I, as I said, I love the card portion. I'm, I'm dubious about the map portion, but it is very fun to play, easy to get going. Um, and it may be budget, but I do think you get a lot of game for the price. Do I think you should have Tyrants of the Underdark in your collection? I want to say yes, especially if you have liked anything that I've said about it here. This game isn't subtle, it's pretty obvious what it's up to and what you're going to be doing. And if that sounds like fun to you, it's well worth checking out. And if you happen to be a fan of D&D and crushing your enemies, well then you're going to get plus one to that. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Hit the like and subscribe button so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Tyrants of the Underdark, why not shout them off in the comment box below. Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.